Hi, this is the Tropical Tidbit for Thursday evening, September 17th. As always, the thoughts here are just mine, and in making decisions, consult the National Hurricane Center and your local weather office for the best information for where you are. We continue to deal with a very busy Atlantic. We have some storms to talk about, newly christened Tropical Depression 22 in the southwest Gulf of Mexico. We have the powerful Hurricane Teddy. We have uh, the remnants of Tropical Storm Vicky. And we have Invest 98L, which looks very much like a tropical depression or storm already and may briefly develop. And uh, there's the remnants of Paulette and even Invest 99L way over to the west of Europe, which may be acquiring subtropical characteristics uh, as it moves toward Portugal. We're going to start off here with newly christened Tropical Depression 22. This is the system that we mentioned yesterday in the southwestern Gulf, and we do have a little bit of a circulation in here. A recon plane just went in and found a loose circulation. You can see west winds here on the south side, and then south winds on the east side, uh, northeast winds here. And north winds on the back side so we do have a closed circulation with organized convection to some extent and so this now qualifies as a tropical depression now we do see it kind of an elongated type of structure and we can see this kind of on satellite as well not perfectly circular a little elongated southwest to northeast here and it doesn't look like the kind of system that's in any hurry to intensify. One of the reasons for that may be that there's an upper level trough over Texas in the upper levels that's digging southeastward here and there's a lot of strong southwesterly flow in the mid to upper levels to the storms north and this is the kind of situation where a weak storm like TD22 may get stretched out a little bit on its north side due to this southwesterly flow which may be one reason it's elongated but also one reason why it may not strengthen very quickly at least for the next day or two. If we look at the model forecast from the GFS here at 500 millibars, this storm may end up being kind of a pain because it's not going anywhere quickly. I know we've all had our fill of slow moving storms after Sally. TD22, unfortunately, may be another one. This is the GFS for, for this evening showing where TD22 is right now in the strip of orange. And then we have this upper level trough over Texas that I mentioned, which is digging into the Gulf. So you'll see that as we go through tomorrow and into Friday night, we can see TD22 get dragged up just a little bit by this trough as it moves in to the northwestern gulf. Uh, but this trough is not expected to kick TD22 all the way up to the northeast and into the central gulf coast. Instead, this trough is expected to move on and eventually kind of move into the southeastern U.S., leaving TD22 behind. And then we have a weak ridge build to its north over Arkansas and Louisiana. And with this ridge building in behind the trough, we have a little bit of an easterly steering flow, which may try to turn TD-22 toward the west a little bit, perhaps toward a portion of Texas or northern Mexico. The difficulty with this forecast is that this is not a particularly powerful ridge, and we are well beyond the point in the season now, in the summer, now that we're moving into the fall. Uh, we don't really get giant heat ridges over the central part of the country anymore. And so it's actually very hard from this time of the year forward to turn storms into Texas. And uh, for that reason, this ridge is, is pretty weak and it's going to be hard to force TD-22 right into the coast, but it may get very close here. And as we go forward, at least on the GFS, you can see that the storm does develop and get very close to the mouth of the Rio Grande. And again, though, this ridge is quite weak, so it makes it has a hard time making progress all the way inland. And we do get a storm near South Texas at this time, but it will eventually perhaps loop or turn back northeastward. And so you can see the storm kind of do a little loop and then move like this up the coastline. Now, again, this is just one model run. We're already out to seven days here next Thursday. And so this is a long developing situation where the storm goes from here to here in a full week's time. And so obviously there is some room for changes here. Uh, the European model shows something sort of similar with the storm where it currently is uh, by tomorrow morning. And then again comes to the north and then turns to the west as we have a weak ridge in red here build to the north and force the storm closer to the coast. And then on the euro again it kind of approaches Texas but kind of stalls out here and then eventually turns northeastward this time without moving inland over Texas first as it does over the GFS and on the Euro it stays over water and in a week's time we actually end up with a storm that's in Louisiana instead of Texas. So again kind of this 
uh, come come to the north, hook left, stall for a bit, and then scoot northeast again. And the reason it scoots northeast is because this ridge to the north eventually weakens, and we get a little bit of a trough in, in yellow here to come down. You can actually see it a little bit better on the GFS. Uh, this little short wave right here over Oklahoma and Texas comes in and kicks this to the northeast after the ridge erodes, so that's why we get that turn. Again, though, this is a week out, so lots of room for changes to this forecast, and like with Sally, with a slow-moving storm, uh, small errors in the forecast can lead to big impacts on where the storm actually ends up in relation to Mexico, Texas, or Louisiana down the line. If we look at the uh, moisture field on the GFS, we'll see what it currently is right now. Again, we have a trough over Texas. So we have a southwesterly flow over the northwestern Gulf that's kind of stringing this out for a little bit. Now, as this gets dragged north, the other thing that's gonna happen is as this trough scoots by to the east, it's leaving a cold front behind. And this cold front has very dry air here in brown behind it that's gonna get transported behind TD22 in the Gulf. And so you'll see some of that wrap around right in here. So you can see that tongue of brown. This is one of the other things that could limit the storm at least during the next few days. So once we get into Sunday, we may see some dry air wrap in and that could prevent the storm from getting too intense during the weekend. But if you give it a couple of days uh, to mix that dry air out, we could see a stronger storm when it is near Texas or northern Mexico. And that's because if you look at the upper levels, we'll see that once the storm uh, gets dragged up by the trough and this trough moves on to the east, what we'll see left behind is an area of very light flow aloft that uh, is consistent with lower shear over TD22. And with low shear, eventually this dry air does mix out on the model and we get a strengthening storm near the coastline of Texas. So unfortunately, we could be dealing with some storm impacts to the coast, either of Northern Mexico or Texas once we get past the weekend, but it is a slow developing situation and we're probably still several days away from this directly impacting land and it is expected to remain over the water for the time being. This is the first forecast from the National Hurricane Center on the storm showing basically what I just described to you, a, a move to the northeast and then a hook to the west. And the forecast only here goes out through day five. So again, you can see how long it takes for this situation to develop. I showed you how we may see it turn back toward the northeast beyond day five. But again, lots of room for changes here. Just be aware that within a few days, we may see it come close enough to bring potential impacts to portions of coastal Texas and or Mexico. And right now, the NHC forecasts it to remain under hurricane strength. But again, there are some conditions that could allow it to intensify during this time while moving slowly. So we'll have to keep an eye on it as we get into next week. Okay, we're gonna go out back to the big view here and we're gonna talk about Teddy. This is the other storm that is a potential impact to land. And uh, this is a powerful hurricane now moving on its way northwest and we'll get very close to Bermuda by the end of the weekend. If we look at the infrared satellite picture, we'll see this, this big donut shape now, a clear eye showing up on satellite imagery. And the storm has been intensifying throughout the day. Recon aircraft went in there and found that this is now a category four hurricane with winds up to 140 miles per hour. So a very powerful, dangerous storm. It could even still get a little bit stronger, but there are still some imperfections in the storm. We can see that the eye wall itself is a little bit asymmetric with strong thunderstorms only appearing on uh, one half of the eye for most of today. And that's because of a little bit of mid-level wind shear that is perturbing the eye wall, but that hasn't prevented it from becoming a cat four. So it's really not that bad. If we look at the water vapor satellite imagery, we can see that there's a upper level trough here with this curving flow aloft to the Northwest of Teddy. And uh, this is something that Teddy will probably easily shrug aside as the strong outflow pushing outward from Teddy is going to push on this trough and force the trough to cut off into an upper low that backs down to the southwest while the hurricane moves up on its eastern side. And this isn't really expected to be a huge impediment to Teddy, although it could slightly increase the wind shear for a couple of days. The bigger limitation on Teddy may come in the form of cooler ocean water. If we look at where the H wharf has the storm by Saturday evening, here's Teddy, here's the island of Bermuda. And again, because Paulette moved slowly through here when it turned around or near Bermuda, we have this patch of cooler water that is also 
uh, only a shallow warm layer now and so when Teddy comes over this cool patch you're going to see the water cool very quickly which we see on the HWARF model where this uh, this water in green is actually cooler than 26 degrees Celsius and the island of Bermuda is right here and if Teddy is not moving very quickly during this time then it could uh, see some limitations or a little bit of weakening as it approaches the island of Bermuda due to this cooler water. And so that is some good news. Unfortunately, it's probably not enough to prevent Teddy from being a powerful, dangerous hurricane with winds over 100 miles an hour being possible in Bermuda if they get a direct hit. Now, thankfully, if we look at the GFS here, some of the model tendency has been toward a track that takes it just to the east of Bermuda here, if you look at where the island is and in relation to the model, it, there are impacts to the island on this model run, for example, on the GFS, but it is just to the east, and most modeling is just to the east of Bermuda, but it's certainly too close for comfort. The big change on the GFS since yesterday is that it now sees this cutoff low that the European model has seen since yesterday, but the GFS did not until today, which it has now corrected toward. I can show you a few model runs ago. You can see yesterday this trough was scooting off to the east instead, and now in recent runs it has corrected to a cutoff to the east of New England. And so again, this kind of thing is going to capture the hurricane and drag it up and it's going to try to pivot around this trough a little bit. So you're gonna see this interaction between the two kind of swings Teddy up toward the left and up into Atlantic Canada. And uh, this would obviously be a, a huge impact for Southeast Canada. And we see something similar on the European model where again, the track is just to the east of where Bermuda is here. And then again, interaction with this trough swings it up to the west and it gets a little bit closer to Maine than it does on the GFS. And so you can see that the weakening hurricane is just off of Maine on this particular model run. Couple of points to make here. Uh, as I discussed yesterday, it's very hard to actually get this to hook directly into New England. This upper low would have to be extremely powerful in order to make that happen. And it remains more likely that this finds a way to stay near or southeast of Canada instead of coming all the way in to New England. So this is, at this moment, unlikely to be any kind of Hurricane Sandy type of event. But it is the kind of thing where you can see some model runs getting it close enough to potentially bring impacts to Maine. So it's something to keep an eye on, but it's still five or six days away and things could change here. And a lot of these tracks that we're seeing on modeling are still far enough away from New England for it to not be a problem there. Another thing to note is that because it's interacting with this upper level low, it does slow down here. You can see on the, on the Euro, it takes a full day to go from here to here. The good thing about that is that the water gets very cold north of about this line. And so if the if the storm moves over cold water and then takes a full day to get to the coast of Canada or Maine, then the storm would probably weaken a significant amount during that time if it's actually moving slowly. And again, these details can't really be known well five, six days in advance. Uh, but again, signs that this is unlikely to be a full-blown sandy type of event. Here's the GFS ensemble spaghetti showing this general turn toward the northeast and then bending to the left around that upper level low but not far enough west to get into new england but certainly far enough west to be a potential threat to canada and if the storm moves a little bit faster uh, it could still be strong when it goes up in here if it gets captured by the upper low for a while it may dawdle and hopefully weaken before moving ashore but if the upper low does not capture it fully it may move quicker and be a stronger storm when it moves into southeast Canada. Uh, the European Ensemble is similar to the GFS, a little bit farther left, showing tracks that get a little bit closer to Maine, but in general still into Canada here. And you can see that these colors, the pink indicates a strong storm, and the blues and greens indicate a much weaker storm. So you can see how quickly it weakens when it goes from here to here, as long as it's not moving too fast. The whole point is once it moves over the cold water, whether it has enough time to weaken is the key. So slower moving is actually better here prior to getting to the coast of North America. As far as Bermuda goes, it's on the left-hand side of these ensemble envelopes, both on the European model and on the GFS model where the island is here. So thankfully, model's trying to take it to the east of the island right now, but it's certainly too close for comfort and it's within the margin of error. So if you're in Bermuda, you should probably treat this as a threat of a direct hit. It's still well within the NHC error cone here. So you can see this track 
uncomfortably close, and if it shifts back to the left, this could still be a direct hit. NHC does have some weakening of the storm as it nears the island, but still has winds of about 110 miles per hour in the forecast as it moves by Bermuda. Again, some of that cooler water near the island may result in some weakening, but still could be quite dangerous and is likely to be large and cause dangerous surf and storm surge, even if the eye does not move over the island. So do be aware, uh, Bermuda just dealing with Paulette a short time ago, hopefully are able to make preparations for yet another hit. Bad year for them over in Bermuda. That's about it for the storms that I'm going to discuss today. We do have other other storms lurking. This one is not expected to be a big threat as it's going to interact with an upper level trough that's up here and get sheared and kind of meander and then decay over the middle of the ocean. No real threat to land there. We have the remnants of Vicky that are sitting in here, which are also not a threat. And uh, we may have other waves come off behind that may need to be watched. But for the moment, the big threats are Teddy and Tropical Depression 22. So we'll keep an eye on both these storms as they could be threats to land by the time we get past the weekend. That's it for now. Thanks for watching.